112263 by Stephen King is probably one of my favorite books, and so in an attempt to chase the high that that book brought me, I turned to ChatGPT and asked if it could recommend a book with a character similar to Jake Epping from 112263. ChatGPT did its thing and spit out five books that were supposedly similar, and Outlander by Diana Gabaldon stuck out to me because I kind of had my eye on it, and interested in the idea that ChatGPT could just spit out a book. I asked Megan if she wanted to find a book from ChatGPT as well, and she was down. So for my first prompt, I wanted to use it to try and help me figure out which book I should read in the dystopian fantasy genre since I've been wanting to get back into that. Um, I also requested that it have a romance subplot to keep me entertained because if I wasn't reading a romance book, it needed to have a subplot. So it gave me five different options and I ended up going around Barnes & Noble to gather up my options as long as I hadn't read them to see what I was working with. Red Queen was one option that it gave me and it also suggested Graceling, which I took one look at that cover and decided I am not getting that book. Um, but I think I did pull it out to Goodreads anyways, and then there's also City of Bones. So I was checking all those out to see what the ratings and general consensus were before I finally decided on the Red Queen. Outlander. I'm about 100 pages in right now. I wanted to give you guys my initial thoughts. I would say right now I feel like I haven't gotten into the thick of the plot yet. I think there's a lot of backstory that's been laid down and so I'm trying to kind of like wait and hold back any opinions until I like really get into it. Um, that being said, I'm enjoying it at least right now and I'm curious to see what happens. I know that two main characters are supposed to end up together but I don't know what else happens besides that. So right now the two characters have not ended up together and so I'm like waiting for that to happen. Um, the only other thing that I have to really know about the book right now is that um, it's taking me a little bit longer to read just because it takes place in the past and then also in the Scottish Highlands and so the author wrote a lot of the dialogue how you would how it would sound like if you were hearing it and so it's just like taking me a second to read a sentence and be like oh that's what that's saying because it's written not phonetically but almost so in that sense it's taking me physically longer to read the book but Hoping to get a little bit further into it today and then I'll hop back in and let you guys know if something crazy happens or when I'm at like the halfway point. officially finished Outlander and now I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts. First I'm going to talk about it just as like the book in general and what I liked and disliked and then I'll talk about it as it relates to how I think ChatGPT did with the recommendation given the prompt. My rating for Outlander is three and a half stars out of five. To me the book was just a little bit long and I decided on my rating based off of how likely I was to continue the series and so for me five stars would have been like I'm reading the second book next. Four stars would have been like, I'm for sure continuing the series, I like the book. Three stars would be, this was good, but I'm not continu continuing on. At this point, I feel like it could go either way of like, maybe I'll continue it, maybe I won't. So I landed on three and a half stars. Um, I low-key feel like this book did not need the time travel aspect to it. I feel like it very easily could have been the same story had the main character just gotten lost in a different area. But I don't know, maybe the time travel aspect becomes more important as the series progresses. Um, that being said, let's get into the chat GPT response so I can remind myself why I picked this book. So I asked chat GPT, can you recommend a book with a main character like Jake Epping in 112263? And it gave a couple of options, but when I was recommending Outlander, it said the main character Claire Randall travels back in time from the 1940s to the 18th century Scottish Highlands where she falls in love with a Highlander and gets caught up in the politics of the time. And like base level, that is very similar to the plot of 112263. That's not technically what I asked for though. I wanted a book with a main character similar to Jake Epping, and I more so meant personality-wise. I would have been fine with a similar story, but 
I feel like it just went with like, here's a book with very similar plot. Even then I feel like the plot similarities kind of ended with the time travel and like falling in love aspect. Um, I don't think like the Scottish Highland background uh, and setting is necessarily for me. Um, so that didn't pique my interest as much. I just felt like the book in general was a little bit more slow paced. So as far as the grade that I'll give ChatGPT for its recommendation, I'll give it a C plus. I come to you guys in a little bit of a reading slump. Um, until last night, I hadn't read in over a week, which is the longest that I've gone without reading in a very long time. Um, I'm in the middle of reading The Silent Woods, and I don't know what it is. It's I don't feel like it's this book specifically, because like I do think I will slowly be able to pick away at this book a little bit more. I read a little bit last night, and I read a little bit again today. But it's not helping me get out of this slump that I'm in. And there's so many books coming out and so many books that I'm excited about that I think I just need to like work past whatever this is. And so the next book that I had up on my TBR was this book right here, The Red Queen. And this was one of the books that ChatGPT recommended me. And so here I am recording this for the video we're making about the book recommendations. Um, I'm going into this pretty blind and I honestly like have been meaning to jump into the fantasy realm a little bit but I have not yet so like this is probably my first actual fantasy book it's also young adult and I don't know a whole lot about it except that I've heard really good things um and so I'm excited I just started it like a few minutes ago and I'm just in the middle of the first chapter right now I just feel like this will be a good one for me to hopefully be a little bit more excited about reading and it's not that long of a book. Well, it's like 370 something pages. But I'm going to go ahead and read through the first few chapters and maybe I'll kind of give you guys my first impressions on how it's going. I figured I would give one more update um, because I'm now 50 pages in to the book. And I definitely feel like I'm kind of picking up the pace a little bit, which is always nice since I feel like I've been reading really slow with my other book. Um, and luckily, there's like a little bit of world building and stuff in this that I'm trying to, you know, get through and figure out. But it's nothing too complex or crazy, so I feel like that has not been a barrier so far. And I'm also interested now because we've been introduced to a few different characters, so I'm curious to see where we're going to go from here. Anyways, I will keep you guys updated on my thoughts on this book as I read through it. I thought I would share an update with my thoughts on the book so far because I am on page 200 now. So I'm a little more than halfway. I I feel like it is kind of similar to The Hunger Games a little bit, which I haven't read since middle school, but it is giving off the same vibes. Um, there's kind of a love triangle going on. Well, honestly, like, there's multiple possible love interests that I'm not really sure who's going to end up being the main one. And I'm also not really sure if I'm rooting for a specific one or not. Um, but the main character, Mare, is basically trying to figure out Basically, there's a revolution going on, so that's like pretty much the same premise as The Hunger Games. And she was like thrown into the higher class society and is now trying to help with the revolution and stuff. So she's doing training as part of the upper class society, but she's also trying to do like all this stuff behind people's backs. So it's been good, and I've been pretty consistently reading so I'm not getting into any sort of slump which is nice. Okay I have decided that right now I'm going to sit down and finish reading the rest of this book. I have I think like 80 pages left so I'm just gonna do it. I have been definitely enjoying this book but in some ways I'm kind of like not that much has happened where I'm just like I need to figure out what's happening next like I don't feel like the pace of this book has been very like fast I've been enjoying it, but I'm not going to be like, unless it ends differently, I feel like I'm not going to be like racing to pick up the second book in this series, but like I probably, as of right now, I think I would eventually keep reading the series, um, but yeah, I'm going to see how it goes as I finish reading it here, and then I'll let you know my final thoughts on whether or not ChatGPT gave me a good recommendation based on the prompt that I gave. the 
look. They really like saved all of the action for the last 80 pages because that was basically the entire book in the last 80 pages. Lots of twists and turns um, and definitely was stuck to the book because I needed to know what was going to happen. Um, I think I'm going to rate the book four stars just because um, that's what it was for me. It wasn't like a five star read or anything. Um, and I don't, like I'm probably gonna keep reading the series, but it doesn't need to be like the next book that I read. And in terms of the prompt that I gave ChatGPT and how well I think it did for that, I think I basically said something along the lines of like, give me a fantasy with a romance subplot. And this was that, although I would have liked for there to have been a little bit more romance in it. Um, I understand this is young adult, and I just felt like I didn't get a whole lot. You catch glimpses here and there of, like, you know, between some of the characters, but I was wanting a little bit more, and maybe in upcoming books there will be a little bit more of that. But I would still say that, I know Sierra's giving, like, a grade earlier. I guess I would give it probably, like, a B plus. It did a good job. Okay, it is time to find my next chat GPT book. And I already have my prompt written out. I said, recommend a book with a first person male narrator, a romance subplot, adventure. Let's see what it shoots out for me. Uh, I recommend the book, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It features a first person male narrator and combines elements of romance, adventure, and fantasy. The protagonist, Kovot, or however you say that name, Tells his own story as he recounts his life's journey from a talented young musician to a notorious wizard. Okay, let's look it up on Goodreads. 4.52 out of 894,000 reviews. It's pretty impressive. It's another long book. It's 662 pages. My last book was 600 pages. But look at that. That's pretty impressive. That's impressive. I wasn't anticipating fantasy, but I am intrigued. I'll look more into this. Doing some research. Okay, I think I've decided I'm going to give this one a go. I'm going to buy it on Kindle, I think, for 10 bucks because Megan and I are doing some traveling pretty soon and I want to be able to read it while I'm on a plane or just like laying by the pool and the book is 600 pages. It's also low-key kind of an ugly cover and I don't like buying ugly books. Um, so just for that reason, I'm going to buy it on my Kindle and I'm going to try it out. Two 600-page books this video is making me do. Um, and it's also going to be a fantasy one for me, which fantasy is not usually something that I read, but Megan read it for this video, and now I'm going to. For my second prompt, I have really, really loved Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Like, it's one of my favorite romance books ever. I wanted to try figuring out what books it would suggest to me if I asked for similar books, so it spit out five options for me. I actually hadn't heard of any of these except for the Unhoneymooners. I think Sierra may have heard of a few of them. So I was kind of surprised that I wasn't getting books recommended to me that were very popular on book talk and just like typical romance books. But again, I went through, I picked up the books that I could find in Barnes and Noble and I was comparing them. I also found Love in Other Words and I just had to take a little moment to appreciate that book. Um, but I checked them out on Goodreads and decided to go with The Rosie Project because it actually had surprisingly high ratings and I think it was the best one out of the bunch possibly. And so that's what I went with. Okay, so this is the first actual talking update that I feel like I'm giving you guys on, um, what's the book called? The Name of the Wind? So I meant to give a, like, first hundred pages update and then I just never picked up the camera, kept reading it, now I'm halfway through the book. But I feel like now I can give you guys a little bit more of, like, not full circle because I'm only halfway, but a more well-rounded update. So this book follows, I feel like in my head I'm saying his name. It's Coat or like Kavot or Kavoth, I don't know. It's spelled two different ways because I think he has like this alternate identity and so he goes by like K-O-T-E as his like alternate identity, but it's K-V-O-T-H-E for his actual name. Anyways, it is a lot of stories within a story and so it follows him. The first 50 to like 80 pages are 
like the present day where he's an innkeeper and that part was kind of boring i was like what's going on i feel like i didn't have any backstory and so i just i feel like they were alluding to stuff that i didn't even begin to understand what they were alluding to so that was kind of tough to get through but then this person shows up the chronicler and he recognizes coat or Cavote or whatever his name is as being some like legendary figure and he wants him to share his life story because he's like got all these crazy stories and legends about him he wants him to share it for himself and so then coat starts sharing his life story and then it's kind of like when the interesting stuff actually starts happening but even when he's like sharing his story i feel like stories are just a big part of his life in this book in general because there will be like stories within a story of like he's telling a story of him being younger listening to like these people telling stories about these ancient legends and stuff and i just got to the part where he's in the university which is this magical school where he learns how to actually perform magic and i feel like that's when this book is like really picking up and so i'm more interested in it now than i was initially so i think i'm enjoying it more than i was enjoying outlander so that seems like it'll be at least a 3.5 but maybe depending on how the rest of the book goes it could be a four or above <laughs> Okay, so I have officially finished my second ChatGPT recommended book, The Name of the Wind, and I'm going to talk to you guys about it. So I gave this book four out of five stars. Initially, I was a little bit lower, but as the book went on, I started to enjoy it more, and I could see myself continuing the series. Honestly, from what I've looked up, though, I think there's for sure a second book and maybe like a 2.5, which was published in like 2011 or something, and then like the author is still working on a third book, so I don't know if that's ever actually happening. Um, but yeah, to go over what I asked for when I wanted ChatGPT to recommend the book, I said, recommend a book with a first person male narrator, a romance subplot, an adventure. And as far as my grading, I honestly would give it like an A minus. It did have adventure, that was basically the whole premise of the story was that the male main character was just telling his life story. And I feel like I need to read the second book now because it didn't even cover his whole life. Like, he's like legendary and that's why they want to know his story. But we didn't even get to like the part of his life story that I feel like he's known for. So in that sense, I feel like I have to keep reading to find out. Um, there was a romance subplot. Honestly, it didn't even show up or start until like halfway through the book. So I had already read like 300 or 350 pages at that point. And I was like, is there a romance that's going to happen here? Um... And there was adventure so it had everything that i asked for and it gave me a book that i would not have probably picked up otherwise because i'm not someone who usually picks up fantasy um but maybe i'll start diving a little deeper into some of the fantasy books that people keep recommending okay i am officially going to be starting the second book that chat gpt picked out for me um which is going to be the rosie project by graham simpson if that's how you say their name um, and so just as a reminder for the prompt that I used in ChatGPT, I said give me book suggestions like Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren since that is one of my favorite romance books. Um, and so let me give you a brief rundown of the summary of this book. So the main character is Don Tillman and he is a genetics professor and he has created this survey that is supposed to help you find like, the ideal partner. So he finds his perfect match and then kind of quickly dismisses like this is not my perfect match. But he ends up still working with her to try and see if he can help her find her biological father since he's like a genetics professor and might have some ability to help her do that. To be honest, this sounds a lot more like The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren, so obviously same author, um, but I don't know if it's going to give Love and Other Words vibes. I don't really think that's going to happen just given the setting. I don't think it's going to be like at a beach or a lake house or anything, um, but it sounds like a good book regardless and it's going to be pretty short. And I think the reviews on it were pretty good too. So I'm excited to jump in anyways. I think that I'm probably going to just start this one I am reading before bed today. Um, but I will check in with you guys and kind of give you my update um, soon. Okay, I wanted to share some of my initial thoughts. I'm only about 18 pages into this book. But I think it's going to be an interesting read. Um, the main guy character in this book 
he definitely seems like he has some sort of Asperger's syndrome or something like that going on. Um, he hasn't like officially, like he's not been officially diagnosed with it that I've found out yet, but it's from his point of view. He definitely doesn't have the same like social cues. It's talked about a couple of dates he's gone on that like he just reacts a lot differently in different situations than most people would. And so I think it's going to be an interesting perspective. It's reminding me like the first couple of pages, I was immediately thinking of Monk because Monk is, Monk doesn't have Asperger's, but he has like, he does not get along with, or he doesn't follow a lot of social cues or social norms. And he's kind of an outcast and most people don't perceive him the best. So I'm hoping in some ways that if the character is kind of like that, that I can root for him in the same way that I do when I'm watching Monk, I'm always rooting for him. And then also, because I don't have a whole lot of experience with characters like this in books, it's also reminding me of Charlie from Flowers for Algernon, um, just because in that book, the main character also has some sort of um, mental disability. I don't know officially what it is or remember, but he has a lower IQ and again, social norms aren't um, really things that he understands very well. So that's mostly the vibe I'm getting from this so far. And it definitely is going to make it an interesting book and not a typical romance. So yeah. I meant to give an update after I read from my book earlier at the beach, just because I know the last time I talked to you guys at my first impressions, I was like really not sure about this book. And I would say I'm definitely getting more interested in the book and I care more about the main characters and it's not as like awkward and weird as it first seemed like it might be. So I'm definitely like thinking I'll keep going for now. I'm not really considering and DNFing it at this point, but I'm also not like reaching to finish this book. Like I'm gonna set it down and I may or may not read it tonight because I'm just like not super interested or invested in the book at this point. So we'll see if it can keep drawing me in. After a brief intermission from reading this book, I am back to it. I had to read Yours Truly because we went on vacation and that's the one I brought with me and then I got too hooked into that book. But I'm back reading this one. Um, I'm planning on finishing it this week because the video needs to go up. but. Um, right now I'm still kind of indifferent about it. I'm not like dreading reading it, but I'm also not like looking forward to reading it. Um, but I'm hoping that it's short enough I can just get through it. Okay, I need to give you guys an update since I officially finished reading The Rosie Project. So first let's talk about what I thought of it and then I will talk about how well ChatGPT did with recommending this book to me. So I know my first impressions, I was really unsure about this book and if I was going to like it, if I was going to get invested in the characters. And I feel like I ended up getting more invested and I cared more about what was going on the more I read it, which was always, that's always a good sign. Um, it wasn't my favorite book ever, but I did end up giving it a three and a half out of five stars. I feel like there are certain people that would really enjoy it. Um, the closest thing I've read to it, I feel like, is Flowers for Algernon. So if you like that book and you're wanting something similar, this is maybe kind of something that would fit that. Um, but... It's almost just like it's not your typical romance by any means, and so in terms of how well ChatGPT did with recommending this book to me, like my prompt was give me books like similar to Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren, and this was nowhere anywhere close to that like at all. I've read multiple books by Christina Lauren, and like the closest thing that we have going on is like the genetics aspect of this and maybe like some components of the genetic portion of the soulmate equation. But like otherwise, very different books. Um, so I'm gonna give it like a grade of like a C because I really feel like it did not do a good job with the recommendation. Um, so yeah, those are my overall thoughts. Well, there you have it. We have both officially read two books recommended by ChatGPT to us. It might and be a fun thing to we have like doing. a mixed bag of results, yeah. I think. I think I definitely will use it in the future. Like if I'm looking so for book like recommendations, if I'm for very specific things that no one else is giving me what I want then like if you can turn nowhere else you can at least like turn to at that. least start with that and then you can go to goodreads or like find other recommendations based off of those books but i think it's a great starting point yeah 
We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see any other book related videos on this channel, please give us some comments and ideas below. Otherwise, we always post vlogs pretty frequently. We have a podcast called According To You can listen to. Um, and we will see you guys in our next video. Bye! Bye.